my doctor. He still has me a few restrictions for a few more weeks here and, and uh, uh, a few things that I have to do for the next month at least. So, uh, but uh, uh, I have to be careful even after that. He said that no more lifting the air conditioners by yourself, Pastor. And I said, no, no, those days are done. And I said, I don't mind uh, lifting one uh, with somebody, but not by myself. I mean, I can do that. So, uh, but uh, praise the Lord for uh, healing hand upon me, and thank you for your prayers for me. I'm going to try to preach to you tonight uh, for the book of Psalm, Psalm 124. Psalm 124. You know, uh, uh, every single day that you wake up, uh, you're in a spiritual battle. You know, from uh, the day uh, uh, we're born until the day we breathe our last breath, we're in a spiritual battle. Um, you know, uh, tomorrow they'll be uh, uh, celebrating the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and uh, uh, it, uh, it is amazing that, uh, excuse me, many of the uh, men that uh, fought on, on those beaches, uh, most of them are gone. Uh, there's very few that uh, actually fought there now and, and uh, actually served, and, and uh, those are very uh, the numbers are getting thinner and thinner, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the battles have stopped being fought. Uh, we still have uh, servicemen uh, that are fighting for our country and fighting for our freedoms, and it may not be uh, um, you know Nazi Germany anymore, uh, but there are other uh, enemies of our country uh, that uh, they are fighting. It's in the same sense. Uh, spiritually, there's always a battle that's going to be constantly going on uh, until uh, the Lord calls us home. And, and uh, we have to understand that, that there's uh, always going to be that battle. And uh, so uh, we're going to be looking at some things about uh, the battle, and uh, hopefully it will be a help and encouragement to you. Let's stand, if you would, to show respect to the reading of God's Word. If you cannot understand, you may remain seated with a good stand and show respect to the reading. Psalm 124. Uh, I'm going to read the entire chapter here, verses 1 through 8. We'll have a word prayer to get right into the message uh, here today. Psalm 124, it says, If it had not been uh, the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when uh, their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had, had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone uh, over our soul, when the proud waters had gone uh, over our soul, blessed be the Lord, who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare, and the fowlers, the snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Yeah. And kind of a message today, strength for the battle. Strength for the battle. Let's go to the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we're thankful for each one that uh, was able to make it, make it here today. And Lord, I, I do pray for those that uh, were not able to join us, Lord, for one reason or another. Some, maybe, Lord, because of sickness. Lord, I pray that you touch their bodies and heal them up. And Lord, help them uh, be able to join us again, even this uh, Sunday, uh, Lord, in worshiping you. Lord, there's maybe some others that... Uh, uh, that didn't join us, maybe uh, because of some spiritual sickness, Lord. They're just uh, struggling with some things and, and uh, Lord, making uh, some wrong decisions. But, Lord, I pray that you'd even help them during this time, uh, Lord, to uh, speak to the heart. Help them to realize, Lord, they need to make some right decisions and be back in your house. Lord, even this Sunday, Lord, I pray that they've determined uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, they, they'll even be able to watch on Facebook Live here tonight. And, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will bring that conviction. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to uh, be attentive, to uh, uh, have, uh, Lord, that you would give me uh, clarity of thought, clarity of mind, and uh, Lord, give me the words to say, and Lord, that each uh, person here would uh, get what you have for them, Lord, that they'd apply these things to their heart and life. Lord, that uh, we'd be strengthened uh, for the battle. Lord, that we'd be strengthened in the battle, and Lord, that we'd be encouraged as well tonight. Lord, bless now our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. May be seated. Strength for the battle. As I mentioned earlier, we're in a spiritual battle against Satan and his host dominions. 
Uh, you know, uh, uh, the people that uh, well, I mentioned, you know, that our, our country is still at war or, or uh, fighting, uh, you know, different countries still, but, but uh, uh, the people that they are fighting are not our enemy as far as uh, the ultimate enemy, amen? Uh, now they may want to try to destroy our way of life, or they want to destroy our, our freedom, uh, uh, you know, the, the liberty that we have, but uh, ultimately Satan is our, our enemy. And the battle, battle rages on, whether you're in the fight or not, by the way, amen? Uh, sometimes people get out of the fight and they uh, think, well, you know, I've fought long enough, I'm not going to fight anymore. And, and uh, boy, I've seen some uh, uh, churches that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the pastors held, held the line for uh, a number of years and then finally get to a, a certain age for one reason or another and they say, well, you know what, I just don't want to fight anymore and, and uh, uh, then they end up uh, seeing some of those churches, uh, many of them, uh, go by the wayside. But uh, uh, we need to realize uh, we're on the winning side, amen? Uh, you know, Jesus Christ is our Savior. Uh, he's already given us the victory. Uh, you know, we, we already know the end of the book. We know uh, we win in the end, amen? Uh, Satan is defeated and, and all of that. And, and that's, that's in and of itself is encouraging. But uh, uh, we need, uh, uh, in, in our fight, in the battle, uh, we need strength. Not, of course, uh, your own strength, uh, because eventually you become weak and unable to proceed. Uh, you must uh, uh, daily rely upon the Lord's strength, uh, but especially for the battle. The Lord is on our side when we belong to Him. When the Lord is on our side, we're on the right side, by the way. That uh, knowledge alone should strengthen our soul, but knowing that the Lord is on our side. And it reassures us that the Lord is our source of, of that strength that we need. So the message today, uh, uh, I hope each of you will see your strength, uh, uh, and the source of your strength in the struggle, and how we uh, can not only overcome or prevail over the enemy in the battle. Got a number of things that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to you here tonight. First of all, number one, our side of the battle. Our side of the battle. You know what? Uh, uh, God sees the big picture, doesn't he? And I'm glad for that. And, and even says there in, in uh, verses 1 and 2, it says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been uh, the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. You know, uh, we need to realize that we have a battle. And that is, uh, well, first of all, our battle is with the world. You know, uh, uh, and the, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are told in First John chapter number 2 and verse number 15. And, and uh, you know, there's always going to be a pull uh, towards the world. You know why? Because we're doing battle with the flesh. We'll see that here in just a moment. But every single day uh, you wake up, uh, there's the battle of the world. The world is trying to, uh, you know, uh, Satan's trying to use the world to buy it uh, for our attention, trying to uh, get our attention off the Lord. And, and uh, you know, it's amazing uh, how many times people get sidetracked uh, on issues or, or just uh, uh, things that have nothing to do with eternity. Amen? Uh, it really is sad. But uh, you and I have to realize we're, we're doing battle uh, with the world. And then uh, uh, something else uh, we have on our side of the battle, uh, we have to battle with the flesh. Amen? We have to battle with the flesh. I want you to notice real quick, I keep your finger there in Psalm uh, 124. We'll come back to it here in just a moment. Uh, Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter number 9. First Corinthians chapter number 9. And I want you to notice in verse number 27. First Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse number 27. It says there, Paul, of course, he was talking here. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. It says, hey, every single day I have to make sure that my flesh is in line where, uh, where it ought to be. Amen. And then he says the less by, that by any means what I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. He said, hey, here's the reason why I need to make sure that I do battle with my flesh and make sure I have my flesh under control and, and uh, make sure that I don't uh, uh, allow my flesh to rule and reign. And he said, otherwise, one day I may be a castaway as well. So we see there on our side of the battle, we have to, our battle with the world and our battle with the flesh, but we also see our battle with the devil. Why don't you look with me at 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 8. Very familiar passage here. 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 8, it says this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your adversary, 
your adversary, he's not your friend, amen? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Right. No, he's, uh, he's watching, and he'll, uh, he'll look, he'll say, hey, this, uh, this person's not dealing with the flesh, they're allowing the flesh to rule and reign, and boy, I'm just going to heap on a bunch of uh, temptation, and he'll fall by the wayside, and she'll fall by the wayside, and, and uh, they'll be out of the battle. I want you to notice with me real quick, like Jeremiah chapter number 4. Jeremiah chapter number 4. And in Jer Jeremiah chapter number 4, notice with me verse number 7. Jeremiah chapter number 4 and verse number 7. It says there, the line has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the, uh, destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. You know, uh, uh, Satan is doing his best to destroy uh, the very, very fabric of families, the very fabric of, of churches. You know, uh, it is sad, just some of the uh, uh, things that were said. There was a, uh, a lawmaker here in our state. Uh, recently here, she got on the news. I don't remember, her, or don't recall her name, but she got on the news and, and was talking about uh, how, uh, uh, you know, there should be some laws passed to keep abortion. And I'm like, my stars, lady. And, and uh, she made a, a statement, I forget the exact words, and I don't want to misquote it here uh, right at this time. I, I'll try to look it up later, but... But uh, the words, I looked at my wife and I said, uh, she has uh, no idea what she's talking about. And it uh, really is sad, but our, our battle is really with, with Satan. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to, to break up homes. He's trying to break up churches. He's trying to destroy your testimony. He's trying to do everything he can to mess you up. Well, we see and need to see there uh, that we do have a battle with the devil. But on our side, number one, we see that on our side of the battle. Number one, we see our side of the battle, but something else we, and then we see there in those two verses. Number two, we see our source of strength. We see our source of strength. I want you to notice back in our text there, Psalm 124, and notice verse number one and verse number two. It almost repeats it word for word here uh, in the uh, uh, first part of the verses there. It says, if it had not been the Lord who was on what? Our side. And then it says it again, verse number two, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. You know what? Uh, uh, we need to realize our source, the source of strength. You know, our, our strength comes from the Lord. Amen? I, I'm so glad. You know, there's, there's uh, 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 many different scriptures over and over where uh, the Lord really gave supernatural power to somebody. You know, you think of this, David. David, when he faced Goliath, uh, he was just a young man, you know, a... a between the ages of 13 and 16, maybe uh, at the very oldest, 18. He wasn't one much older than that, uh, but uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, you know, 13. How many 13-year-olds we have? Uh, 13, actually, 13 to 18-year-olds. Raise your hand here tonight. All right, look around real quick. All right, few of you we might be able to take. Amen. There's a couple of you. Eh, might not be able to. Amen. But Tom's like, no, no, pass. Well, I know tonight I couldn't do it. Amen. I couldn't take Tom tonight. I mean, give me, give me a month or two here of healing up, and then, then we'll talk about that. Amen. No. Ooh, but uh, then, then fighting work, right? No. But, but in all reality, you know, you think about this. Goliath was somewhere around nine uh, uh, to about ten feet tall, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's a pretty big dude. Amen. Uh, he had uh, he had somebody else carrying his shield, but he was carrying all kinds of armor on him, and and he was coming out to battle to do battle with with the uh, uh, with that little pipsqueak David. But David said this. He said, "Hey, this is not my battle, but the battle is the Lord's." You know that was one of the phrases that he said. He said, "Hey, you come out to me with spears and sword, and I come to you in the name of the Lord." Amen. Why? He realized his source of strength. I, I, I've tried to imagine the, uh, the power that went behind that uh, rock. Amen? Hmm. There is no doubt in my mind and in my heart that God had a finger right behind that uh, rock, pushing it right into the forehead of, of, uh, uh, of Goliath killing him. But you know, uh, we don't have uh, that ability, or we don't face uh, Goliaths maybe here uh, uh, physically, but 
But I can tell you this, we do face some giants and we need some strength. Well, where can we go for that strength? Well, the scriptures. The scriptures are available to us. It's the written word, amen? Aren't you glad for the scriptures? We can go, uh, I know uh, uh, even Brother Slava mentioned about the songs, and many of the songs that are written in the hymns uh, come from the word of God. You know, uh, uh, there's a, a lot of different things in there that, that we can be encouraged from uh, in the scriptures. We can say, hey, David faced the life and he won the battle, amen? The battle uh, was given to the Lord and the Lord uh, fought for him. Do you know uh, something else we need to realize? Our source of strength is the Spirit. The Spirit's present with us, you know? And He's promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Doesn't matter what we're facing. You know, this is that spoken word of God. It's the Holy Spirit that'll come along and say, hey, hey, it's okay. Keep doing right. Hey, it's okay. Keep on the right path. Amen? Oh, and then we also see something else. We see the security of the believer. You know, that is strengthening in and of itself. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty in this world, isn't there? You know, uh, uh, tomorrow the uh, uh, stock market could crash. And if I uh, if it does tomorrow, you say, uh, well, Pastor said it was going to good pay. You know, he must have known something we didn't know. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have a clue about it. Amen. But tomorrow it could crash. The housing market, boy, I remember uh, a few years back, and, and uh, back in, I think it was around 2008, somewhere in that neighborhood, <laughs> And uh, I remember it was actually a Wednesday night. I got up, and uh, boy, there was one person who got up and said, "Oh, pray for this. I'm not sure about this." And another person, "Oh, pray for this. I'm not sure about this." And and I said, "Wait a second. Has God died on us? Amen." And uh, I, had a, I preached an entire different message. I had a, a message already uh, ready to preach, and and uh, I ended up preaching a message. And I don't even remember all the points. I just remember the title. It was entitled "No Fear," and that's what I preached on. And, and, uh, uh, but you know, we need to realize that we do have that security. It's, it's the Lord uh, that gives us that security. It's a reminder of who, uh, uh, of our, uh, uh, of who we can rely upon, uh, who we can depend upon for our strength. What an encouragement to know that, that our, uh, uh, who our strength, uh, our source of strength is, and that is the Lord. So number one, we see our side of the battle. Number two, we see our source uh, of strength. Number three, we see our struggle with the enemy. We see our struggle with the enemy. I want you to notice back in verse number 2 and 3. It says there, uh, the end of verse number 2, when men rose up against us, uh, then they, uh, they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. You know what? Uh, uh, there was opposition. You know, when you're a Christian, by the way, there's always going to be opposition. Amen? There's always, uh, Satan's always going to oppose you. Uh, there are going to be those, I, I've seen even Christians that are under conviction of the Holy Spirit, they, uh, they will oppose when you're trying to do right, they will oppose you. Yep. I've seen it. I've watched it. I've experienced it. Amen? You have to determine to say, hey, I'm going to do right. But you know, there's always going to be uh, opposition. And you know what, uh, I mentioned this earlier, uh, uh, Satan's going to use the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life to try to, to, try to pull you aside. Then we also see something else. We see the obvious outcome with the Lord's help. Notice back on our text there. It says, uh, uh, If it had not been the Lord, verse number 2, who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. So, hey, this is what could have happened. This is the obvious outcome that could have happened, but, but with the Lord's help, we were able to overcome that. Boy, praise the Lord for that. We see there the ordeal is explained. You know, uh, uh, sometimes we go through some things, and, and uh, it's, it's good sometimes to just share it. Uh, I, I'm, I, many times uh, when I've gone through things, uh, I've shared, uh, my wife said the, the other day, she goes, uh, you know, we were talking with, uh, with an individual, and she goes, my husband's just an open book. And uh, I really am. Hey, man, I just, uh, I've always been that way, at least tried to always be that way. And, and uh, uh, but sometimes you, when you begin to talk with somebody and, and you say, "Boy, I went through this and, and I had to go through this," and and uh, then somebody else says, "Boy, I experienced the same thing, and this is what the Lord did to help me and and uh, get me through that." And boy, I tell you, it, it sometimes helps. Well, we see there our struggle with the enemy. Number one, we see our side of the battle. Number two, we see our source of strength. Number three, our struggle with the enemy. Number four, we see our solemn setting. We see our solemn setting. Notice in verse number three again. It says, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. I mentioned earlier about uh, Goliath. 
You know, uh, there are sometimes we have some Goliath-sized enemies, don't we? You think about this. I don't know if you ever uh, done the study. It's been a while since I pre preached a message about that, but uh, David didn't just, you know, say, well, I just need to pick up five smooth stones because, well, you know, in case I miss him with the first one, I got four extra shots. He didn't have a five-shot, uh, you know, uh, 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 slingshot either, amen? You know, it wasn't like, you know, put all five shots in there, pull it way back, you know, like a shotgun kind of a thing. <laughs> Goliath, Goliath had some other brothers. We know, uh, uh, and I don't recall all the names, uh, I want to say Ishdod, I think is one of them, or something like that. One of the brothers, it's not even, he's not even named, but he had six fingers on uh, each of his hands and six toes on each of, each of his feet. He was not only a giant, but he was a freak, amen? <laughs> but you know, you think about this. David, uh, David was willing to face Goliath and all of his brothers. Sometimes we may uh, we may think, well, I got Goliath whooped, and then along comes another one of the brothers of Goliath. Amen. And those are those times when we have to rely on the Lord and say, Lord, would you help me? Lord, would you uh, 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 give me the strength? And, and those Goliath-sized uh, uh, enemies and, and uh, you know, the strength of the enemy, we, we see there, uh, you know, looking at uh, what the psalmist was saying, he said, hey, uh, then they had swallowed us up quick when the, the wrath was kindled against us. You know, this is what could have happened. And we see there also the help and urging of the enemy. It says they... In verse number uh, uh, verse number 23. Then they had swallowed that when their wrath was kindled. It wasn't just one enemy. It was a bunch of them. Amen. They went uh, going after them, and and uh, I remember years ago, I uh, uh, I had a uh, uh, went to grade school. We were going to school over in uh, Benoni, and and uh, at school there. Uh, there was a buddy of mine, his name was Bo Emery. And uh, Bo and I we were uh, real good friends, or at least I thought, I thought we were. <laughs> and uh, one day we were playing soccer, and, and uh, uh, as he was kicking the ball ahead of him, I saw another individual that was going to outrun him and cut him off. And, and I thought, I can beat Bo and kick the ball and get it in the goal, and we'll win. And so that's what I did. I was, uh, you know, running along and, you know, ran real fast and cut right in front of him, kicked the ball and, and kicked it in. We won and all of a sudden, you know, it was uh, uh, the end of recess and, and uh, uh, break time or whatever. I forget whatever time it was. And, and we heard the bell and, and we're like, oh, we got to line up. And, and I was excited and a couple other guys, uh, and, you know, we're, we're excited about it. And all of a sudden I heard... As I'm walking uh, uh, towards the uh, towards the school, we had to line up. There was a little hill that we had to go down, and we had to line up toward the basement door there. And, and uh, all of a sudden, I hear this fight, 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 fight. I had no idea what in the world that was about. And, and uh, all of a sudden, I hear this, and it was a fist that went by me, and, and I'm like, whoa. And uh, uh, there was a couple other boys that had uh, uh, were wanting to gang up on me and, and uh, try to fight me, and all because I had cut in front of my buddy and kicked the goal in, and we won. And I was like, what in the world here, you know? And here's these four, four guys that had surrounded me and were going to try to fight me. And, and uh, you know, I'm like, oh, what, what in the world's going on here? And, and all of a sudden, the uh, principal comes out, Mr. Nelson. And... Uh, you know, Brother Mitch Nelson from over in Menominee, uh, uh, he's a very, uh, very stern and, and a solemn person that I've always, at least that I've always known about him, you know, and, and uh, he come walking up behind all of them and, and he grabbed uh, the one boy's uh, arm as he was going to throw a punch and, and uh, I was just standing there, I'm like, <laughs> Amen. We all uh, we had to uh, draw a, ch uh, a circle in the chalkboard and keep our nose in the in the circle until they had talked to us and all that. But boy, you tell you talk about uh, just an awful feeling when all of a sudden there's four guys taking on one person. I'm like, I, all I did was you know I even told them like all I did was kick in the ball and I, I don't know what in the world happened. 
What had happened was, uh, uh, I didn't know this, but Bo was going to kick it to another buddy of ours that was on our team. And uh, I didn't see that buddy because I was looking at the other guy that was coming up behind him. And I explained to Mr. Nelson what happened. And, and uh, then he, once he saw you know, what had happened, he's like, oh, okay, well, all right, don't do this again. I'm like, well, I didn't, I didn't do anything, amen? But you know, sometimes, sometimes Satan makes us feel like we're surrounded. Sometimes we, we may feel that, that we're the only one. You ever, you ever felt like you're the only one in the battle? Nobody else, you know, nobody else is going through this, Pastor. Well, I've heard that before. <laughs> I had somebody one time that said, Pastor, you would not believe what I'm going through. I said, try me, amen. And uh, uh, the individual was going through something. I couldn't tell that individual what uh, uh, another person had just told me the day before. They were going through the exact same situation. Different names, different faces, but the exact same situation. You know, we're not alone, by the way, amen. But we see there are solemn so setting. Number one, we see our side of the battle. Number two, our source of strength. Number three, our struggle for the enemy. Number four, our soul in setting. Number five, we see our soul overcome. We see our soul overcome. Why don't you notice in verse four and five? It said, when the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. You know what? There have been a lot of flooding uh, lately here, uh, um, and both in our community and then uh, you go further south. Boy, I tell you, there's, uh, I saw on the news last night, there was, uh, I think it was down in Arkansas, uh, they showed the river and, and it was, uh, uh, all you could see was the rooftops uh, of the house. It sounds like, oh my stars, boy, I'm, I'm glad we, we live up north, amen, <laughs> up river, not down river, amen, bless our hearts. But you know, I have been on, on uh, waters when a storm arises. It's a very uneasy feeling. It really is. Uh, yesterday, uh, I appreciated Brother, uh, uh, Brother Tom and, and Brother uh, McCoy uh, mowing the lawn. And yesterday, uh, I was kind of concerned as a pastor. Why? I knew there was a storm rolling in, and Tom's like, hey, I'm going to try and mow the lawn. I said, okay, mow the lawn until uh, lightning strikes. And uh, so I stood outside, and guess what? I stood out there, didn't I? And I was watching them, like. And all of a sudden, I see this. And I'm like, all right. And then time come rolling around. I'm like, mm, yeah, pull it back in, amen. And so why? Because I knew that that storm could be pretty bad. Could be a lot of wind. Could be some uh, possible hail. A lot of things that can happen. You know, uh, if, if you ever have been out on the on the water, out on the lake, or anything like that, a wind uh, begins to pick up, a storm coming along, boy, it, it's an uneasy feeling. Uh, I've been on uh, lakes when there's what's called white caps. If you know, have you ever seen that? It's when uh, waves get so big that they begin to uh, you see the white uh, on top of the, that wave. You know, that's not a, a not a fun feeling. Do you know, sometimes, uh, just like the psalmist said there, said, when the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone uh, over our soul, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. You know, sometimes we can become overcome by the waters of doubt. We can become uh, uh, so, you know, uh, in focused upon our problem that we say, well, does the Lord really care about me? Can He really keep me safe? from this storm, or can he keep me uh, from this boat capsizing in the storm? But you know, uh, sometimes we may be overcome by, by doubt. Sometimes we, we may be overcome by the waves of discouragement. Well, I tell you, uh, I, there have been times that, uh, uh, you know, I guess more recently is probably uh, been, I don't know, within the last uh, five, six years here uh, that I had gotten discouraged before that. Uh, I told my wife, I said, I've never been discouraged before. And now uh, uh, it can kind of become discouraging about some things. And, and uh, you know, then, then it seems like this. The discouragement comes in waves. Amen? You ever watched waves when they beat against something? They don't just say, oh, babe, it's a boat. Oh, it's got people in there. We will go around the boat. We won't hit the boat, right? 
No. Those waves will hit against it, and hit against it, and hit against it, and over and over, and it won't stop, will it? But you know, sometimes that, that can also happen in our life. Waves of discouragement can come along and, and try to discourage us and try to discourage us, and sometimes we do get discouraged. The key, by the way, I want to tell you this, the key is not staying discouraged. Right. Amen? Yeah, we can get discouraged. Yes, your pastor has been discouraged. I, I tell you, I don't ever want to stay discouraged. Amen. I want to. I want to stay encouraged. Amen. But you know what? Uh, something else that can happen. We can uh, be overcome by the waters of doubt and the waves of discouragement. But something else we can uh, become o overcome by is the whirlpools of defeat. You know what happens when a person gets uh, defeated? Kind of feel uh, you know they they begin in this kind of downward uh, spiral. They say, well, you know, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody, uh, nobody's paying attention to me. Nobody's praying for me. And it just is a downward spiral. You know, have you ever seen a whirlpool? Uh, this last winter here, some of you remember we had all this uh, water and, and snow and all that. But when it began to melt, we had the uh, drain down there. It was, uh, they had about four inches of ice, and then we had about a foot of water above that. I was like, I told Miss Stanley, I said, boy, if we don't get this uh, opened up, you know, uh, we're going to have some problems. We're going to have a lot of water out here. So I went out there, and, and uh, I was like, okay, I know the general area where it's at. And I actually snapped a picture recently, so that way I know exactly where it's at and how far out and all that. Uh, but uh, anyways, I was like, okay, I know it's got to be in this area. And so I took some ice milk, and I just kind of made a pattern and uh, like that, and got some more ice milk, and made another pattern like that. And, and uh, I was like, okay, it's got to be right in this area somewhere, you know, within this, you know, five, six uh, square feet area here. Uh, I know that drain's got to be there. And I was sitting there uh, talking with a gentleman on the phone, and, and all of a sudden, I heard this, you know, I'm like, what in the world? And it was some bubbling. I'm like, oh, no, I must have hit, hit something because the bubbling was right near the front tire of the plow truck. I'm like, oh, no, I, I must have hit a, a nail or screw or something. And, and uh, so I'm sitting there talking to this gentleman. I'm like, yeah, this tire's going to go flat. You know, and I'm like, in my head, I'm, I'm just going over my head, okay, how can I get, the, you know, I'll have to get back up here, and, and uh, so I thought, well, I'll just, you know, finish talking to this guy, it won't be much longer, and, and then I began to look out there, and it began to bubble away, away from the tire a little bit, and uh, pretty soon it began to bubble a lot more, and I was like, man, it's like boiling, you know, I'm like, there's nothing boiling here, you know, pretty soon that, uh, that uh, little area, I began to see a little whirlpool. I was like, oh, the drain, it's opening up. Awesome. Amen. Do you know, as that drain opened up, it began to pull that water down. But it also began to pull a whole bunch of other things. Uh, there was some ice floating on the uh, on the water, and it began to be pulling down. And it, pretty soon it began to cover up that, uh, that drain, and it couldn't drain anymore. So I had to, I got out there, I got a chipper, and I began to chip away at it, and, and then I began to see all this other stuff, you know, all kinds of floaties and things that were just being pulled right down into that drain. You know what, that happens to you as well. That, that, uh, uh, that downward spiral will, will come along, and that whirlpool will, will drain you spiritually, it'll drain you physically and mentally, and, and uh, sometimes you can be overcome by those uh, whirlpools of defeat. Oh, we see there our soul overcome. Number one, we see our side of the battle. Number two, we see our source of strength. Number three, our struggle with the enemy. Number four, our soul of setting. Number five, our soul overcome. Number six, we see our sparing by the Lord. We see our sparing by the Lord. Notice in verse number six. It said, Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Boy, what an encouragement. Amen. God will prevail. Amen. God will, uh, uh, will uh, uh, protect. God's way will be protected, by the way. God's workers will not become prey for the enemy. I'm glad that God doesn't say, well, you know what, that's it. They've uh, messed up once. I'm just going to give them over to the enemy. I'm glad he doesn't do that. 
I'm glad he's uh, gracious. I'm glad he's merciful. I'm glad he's willing to say, hey, no, Satan, you, you can't, uh, you, this is how far you can go. Amen. How do we know that? We know that from Job. Amen. Satan wanted to destroy uh, uh, Job's life, and, and God said, hey, you can, do, you can touch anything you ha and that he has, but you cannot touch him. You leave him alone. Amen. Then, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Satan goes, oh, skin for skin, you know, uh, uh, you know, you take away his health, then he'll curse you. What did God do? God allowed Satan to take his health, but he said, hey, you cannot touch his life. His life is mine. Amen. There may be times that you and I may, may feel uh, that we're overwhelmed, but uh, I'm glad that God does spare us. I'm glad that God prevails and he protects and, and he doesn't allow us to become prey for the enemy. Oh, we see there are sparing by the Lord. Number one, we see our side of the battle. Number two, we see our source of strength. Number three, our struggle with the enemy. Number four, our psalm setting. Number five, our soul overcome. Number six, our sparing by the Lord. And lastly, number seven, our snare is sprung. Our snare is sprung. Notice with me verse number seven and eight. Excuse me, it says there, our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is uh, broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You know what? Uh, uh, we have a supernatural intervention. Amen? Amen. I'm so glad for that. I'm glad that God intervenes, and he says, Hey, you know what? Uh, I know this fowler uh, set this snare, and, and uh, he wants to catch my child, but guess what? I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm glad for that. Aren't you glad that God loves us enough that he'll, he'll intervene? And something else I'm glad for? Here in our text, we kind of see it. It may not uh, just come out and say it, but it says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. We are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. You know, we're spared by the grace of God. We're spared by the grace of God. You know what? Uh, by the grace of God, you know, I, I was... Uh, Looking at the news uh, the other day, and uh, actually, it, it started with we, we saw an individual. We, uh, my, my wife and I, went out to eat the other day for a, a quick uh, uh, lunch date, and uh, uh, I told my wife, I, I, we, there was an individual that we've known for a long, long time. And I was standing there talking with him a little bit, and, and uh, uh, we were uh, discussing some things, and, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I said, you know, what's sad, I said is that there are so many people like that that have made wrong decisions. Do you know, but by the grace of God, there go you or I. Amen? You or I could be in that same situation. You and I could be in those same kind of uh, predicaments. Do you know what we need to realize? We need to rely upon the Lord for the strength uh, in the battle. Oh, strength for the battle. You know, the power that God exercised during creation is the same power that is given to us in our battle. You think about this. God spoke this world into existence. You know, he has that same power to be able to help us in our battle. God will give us uh, strength to face the battle as well as uh, to fight in it. But we must rely upon a strength and not our own. I like what Isaiah chapter number 40 verse number 31 says. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, what a great encouragement. You see, God will give you the strength you need in the battle. His strength will be made perfect through your weakness. But will you rely upon the Lord for strength in your battle? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed and her eye closed. Nobody looked around. I could ask uh, just a couple of quick questions. I'm going to ask Mrs. Hallett to uh, play him in the invitation. If God spoke your heart, won't you come during this invitation time? If you hear, I know the message was not about salvation. I have no intention of preaching about salvation tonight. And I don't know every single heart, but God does. Maybe there's somebody here tonight and say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saying. I don't know if I, I, I'm not 100% sure if heaven might turn the whole. Let us pray fair. Would you pray for me? You're going to get that knee just by slipping your hand up, slip it back down, I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's deep. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? 
The other question then is this. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I realize I'm in a, I'm in a battle. And I realize Satan has been beaten against me and uh, the waves of discouragement have beaten against me and, and it just seems like I, I've just felt overwhelmed. I realize I need to rely upon the Lord for my strength. God spoke to my heart during the message tonight. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. Yes, I see that one and this one. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. I see this one over here and this one back here. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? Is anybody else like that here tonight? I want to encourage you in just a moment. If God's going to get hard, won't you come talk to the Lord? Won't you do business with Him? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that you be glorified. Lord, that you will uh, give strength to those that are weary. Lord, I pray that you'd encourage those that are discouraged. Uplift us, dear Lord, during this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray.